click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Well, friends, in the previous topic, we have discussed about the electronic configuration and also we have got to know how to represent the electronic configuration of various other atoms. So based on that, here basically we are going to talk about the electronic configuration of chromium and copper. This is quite different from the previous one. So what is the difference? Let me talk about that in this topic. So friends, let us talk about the electronic configuration of chromium first. Chromium has an atomic number of 24. So let us write the electronic configuration of it. So therefore, the expected electronic configuration which we could find out or we could write it that is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2 and 3d4. So this is the expected electronic configuration of chromium. So in actual practice what happens is here we can find that is the d orbital is having four electrons that is the d subshell it has four electrons that means the first four d orbitals are filled with each electron that is one electron each but we have also discussed in the previous topic that is in the stability of the d orbital or the other orbitals which are half filled and full filled so here basically we can find that is that the d orbital is not completely filled neither it is half filled here basically we can find that is if we could get one electron in the d orbital it would be having a stable electronic configuration and that is how basically the electronic configuration would be very much stable but the thing is to make sure that one electron enters here we have to add another electron that is not possible the only one thing that we can do is here we can understand the Mbos principle yes let me talk about it that is if we understand that is the 4s orbital and the 3d orbital the both the orbitals are having almost the same energy and obviously the electrons that are belonging to their respective orbitals also will have the same energy almost have the same energy that's the reason one of the electron can shift from 4s to 3d making the 3d orbital to acquire a half filled electronic configuration and that is how basically the overall observed electronic configuration it will be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s1 because one of the electron has been shifted to the 3d orbital and this will be 3d5 so now this is nothing but the observed electronic configuration of chromium this is because of the extra stability that it could acquire if one of the electron is been transferred from 4s to 3d making the d orbital half filled and the half filled orbitals are very much stable so this is the electronic configuration of chromium and now similarly based on this let me talk about the copper copper has an atomic number of 29 so the expected electronic configuration we could write it as 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 3d9 here we can find since the d orbital or the d subshell it consists of 1 2 3 4 5 orbitals and here we can find that is and because of the Hertz multiplicity rule we can fill the electrons in such a manner that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 here we can find that is the d orbitals are not symmetrical because one of the d orbital is not completely filled so what happens is one of the electron from the 4s it transfer to 
3D9, making this orbital to acquire 3D10 electronic configuration. And that is how basically this happens because the D orbitals, if it is completely filled or if it is half filled, it will be acquiring extra stability. That's the reason the observed electronic configuration, it will be nothing but, it will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1, 3d, So this is how basically the chromium and copper show different electronic configuration compared to that of the previous one that is what we have did. So that's it. This is what I wanted to discuss about. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have understood this video very clearly and I hope I'll see you next time. Till then don't forget to subscribe to channel. Thank you so much.